stage with our first speaker, Madame Maria Angela Sabando, Mayor of uh, uh, in the Filipino province of Rojas Municipality, Palawan. Her interest, uh, presentation will be on renewable energy, uh, nickel grid power system in Green Island, Rojas, Palawan. Madame Mayor, please uh, follow. Before I have a little bit of background about uh, uh, your background, just let me read the part of it. Uh, Madam Mayor is the second term mayor for the municipality of Rojas, Palawan, serving since July 2010. And during uh, your term, uh, the municipality was awarded the seal of good housekeeping for two consecutive years, uh, with uh, bronze grade in 2011 and silver grade in 2012. For complying with full disclosure policy on vital transactions and for showing strong adherence to transparency, accountability, and performance as the core values of uh, good governance. She also served as Rojas Municipal Coordinator on Social Services between 2001 and 2009. Uh, Madame Mayor is a strong advocate of uh, environmental conservation and renewable energy in the Philippines as she will present us uh, her case. Thank you very much. Yes, good afternoon. I am Maria Angela Sabando, Municipal Mayor of Rojas, Palawan, the Philippines. I am here because I have a very exciting story to tell from our municipality. A success story, an investment opportunity, that can be replicated all over the Philippines. Lessened in the middle of the coral rich waters of Sulu Sea, across the eastern coast of the provincial island of Palawan, Philippines, is an island named after the abundant pandanus, or pandan plant, the tribe in the area, Green Island. Green Island is part of Ross Municipality, which is one of the towns on the northern half of Palawan province. It is divided into four zones, zones 1, 2, 3, and 4. By the start of 2014, it is populated by 450 households or 2,400 individuals whose main livelihood is fishing and seaweed farming. Netting families a daily income of 150 Philippine pesos or less than 4 US dollars. As the local chief executive of Rojas Municipality, to which Green Island belongs, I've always advocated education for our people. Since the seed that we will have planted in our children will ensure a brighter future for them, their families, and the Green Island as a whole. However, providing education to Green Island is not at all easy. Limited electricity supply meant the children had to study with kerosene bombs, endangering their health and wellness, and severely limiting study hours. Whatever limited electricity supply the island receives is prohibitively expensive and is in constant short supply, making computers and classrooms a tall order. While the island cost two KBA diesel generators that are enough to provide four hours of electricity to more than 100 households in zones 1 to 3, it is polluting and its electricity output is expensive at $2 per kilowatt hour. Moreover, zone 4 remains without electricity. So we are faced with a very basic problem. How can we pursue education if the little electricity supply we have is not enough, not sustainable, and very expensive? Thankfully, the United States Agency for International Development, through a grant under its Climate Change and Clean Energy Project, or Synergy for short, initiated an investment that would introduce a renewable energy-based microgrid system in the island. This was done with a local partner, Solutions Using Renewable Energy Incorporated, or short, and an NGO, the Palawan Center for Appropriate Rural Technology, or PICAR. PICAR has been actively helping rural communities in Palawan for almost a decade. The grant aimed to demonstrate that an investment involving a combination of RE technologies can work to provide electricity 
in an isolated area like Green Island without depending on diesel generators which are expensive, intermittent, and high, has high carbon footprint. The investment involves a 25.5 kilowatt system composed of a 20 kilowatt biomass gasifier, a 3 kilowatt wind turbine, and a 2.5 kilowatt solar array. Altogether, the system currently generates 4,500 kilowatt hours of electricity per month. The investment currently connects 50 pilot households in Zone 4, which is, as mentioned earlier, not connected to the existing diesel generators. Apart from providing electricity to the households, the investment includes other components. First, an ice plates machine maker that can produce one ton of ice daily, which is used to preserve the catch of the fishermen. Second, a water pump. And third, a soon to be installed reverse osmosis machine which can provide 1,000 liters of potable water daily. All of these are powered by the RE microgrid system. The investment was a blockbuster in terms of its direct economic and greenhouse gas mitigation benefits. On the economic front, we have achieved a reduction of electricity prices by as much as 50% by displacing diesel-derived electricity costing $2 per kilowatt hour with RE-derived electricity whose levelized cost is around half. We have also localized the production of ice and potable water and incurred savings from not having to pay transportation costs. We have also produced a local technicians with training on maintaining a combination of RE systems. On the environmental front, USAID Synergy estimates that the investment has abated around 254 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalents per day, contributing concretely to the global fight against climate change. Now that we have this investment, we can now look forward to bigger things. Better education, as a student can now study longer, and computers can now be installed in schools. Higher value fishing by way of post-harvest technology, development of tourism industry by providing low-cost housing to informal settlers, better marine ecosystem management by providing livelihood that do not compromise the ecological balance of the island. Due to the country's archipelagic nature, this investment was by no means an easy thing to accomplish. What I can even say is, we made the impossible happen. Among the challenges we faced were logistics in transporting construction materials and equipment, including weather and condition of the sea, acquisition of clearances, community dynamics, and technical complication of equipment. I want to focus on the logistic challenge. Due to the remoteness of the island, it became a challenge to bring in heavy equipment. This was done, this was one of the major problems of Shore and Picard. How would you deliver equipment weighing in tons to the island if infrastructure is lacking? The system was delivered to the island one at a time, part by part, until it was completed and ready to be installed. Huge boats cannot get into the island as there are corals underneath the sea, which could also damage the boats that carry the equipment. Security of our many equipment were also of top priority. Logistics and constructions were also dependent on weather and sea condition. Luckily, the powerhouse structure and foundation of the wind turbine were not damaged during the onslaught of the Typhoon Yolanda. The structure remained standing and the project site was safe from storm surge and flooding. All the challenges, however, did not deter us and our partners to finish our microgrid power system. I want to pause for a moment so that I can highlight four basic points. So, what lessons have we learned in this investment? What kind of key takeaways can I share in this plenary? Let me cite them. First, a viable business model. 
is indeed present to make this kind of investment happen. This business model involves crop production, thereby actualizing multiple revenue streams apart from electricity sales. Second, the issue of red tape must be addressed. Sure and Picard, our partners, were tasked to handle the processing of clearance and endorsements and took them a year before everything was acquired. Our municipality facilitated barangay and municipal endorsements, but we don't have a hand in the other clearances. Therefore, these regulatory bottlenecks must be addressed. Third, the presence of a strong local partner or a network of local partners is essential. No matter how vast the pool of financial resources and technical and engineering know-how a private sector player has, if it does not have strong relationships with channels that give them direct insights to what is happening on the ground, the investment will not be as successful. Fourth, that the Philippine Islands is indeed, and without an inkling doubt, truly rich. We just need to help the people living in these islands to stand on their own two feet and live sustainably. We plan to replicate this investment in other island communities and other parts of Rojas municipality. In fact, three units of higher model of biomass gasifiers are already expected to arrive as part of our expansion plan to provide lighting to the whole island instead of limiting to so only 50 households. With so many island communities in the Philippines needing electricity that is not dependent on diesel generators that are costly, limited, and contributes greenhouse gas emissions, the opportunity is there for replication and scaling up. Therefore, we enjoy the private sector, especially the donor community and the business community, to talk to us and learn from each other. Together, we can make the impossible possible. Why? Because the success story of Green Island is a story of making the impossible possible, a shining example of a win-win investment opportunity one that shall serve as a blueprint to other communities that are belonging to plant the seed of their own dreams. For more detailed information about the RE Microfield investment, we are passing around a one-page infographic that provides any and all information that you need in one handy package. For those who want to initiate a conversation with me, you can reach me at my email address rimicrogridrojas at gmail.com Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much,